the bar wide. Got, far away. <laughs> got a good looking crowd this morning. Uh, it's the first Sunday of the month, so if anybody got a birthday in the month of August, get you a stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. All right. Ah, yeah. <laughs> 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 child prodigy. I graduated when I was six. <laughs> and I have been on cloud nine ever since. <laughs> Anybody graduate that young has to really be a prodigy. But it is good to see all of y'all this morning. I love to see smiling faces. And we uh, just welcome you back at any time and every opportunity you have. Our Sunday school program starts at 945. I know y'all hear me say that every Sunday, but we just love to have you for our Sunday school. Amen. So just come join us at 945 and for a, for a good fellowship in Sunday school where you can study God's Word and, and learn and, and chew on those words and, and, and take it every day out in the battlefields that we had to go into. Okay, as far as announcements, uh, next Sunday night for, for our kiddos going back to school and everything, we're going to have an ice cream fellowship and uh, celebrate them going back to school. Parents are just tickled and the kids are sad, but <laughs> so we're going to have ice cream try to cheer everybody up about it. So y'all be in prayer about that. If you got an ice cream freezer, uh, or just go by and get some blue bell or whatever. Uh, bring it, uh, bring it, and uh, expect to have a good time of fellowship next don't Sunday night. Blue bell when you bring it. Do what? Don't lick the blue bell. Yeah, don't lick that. Yeah, yeah, bring a full cart, Gary. Don't, don't bring an one that you licked out of. Uh, 
Celebrate Recovery Class will be held at the church Monday, August 5th at 6 p.m. Uh, if you'd like more information, just see Miss Tina Hill back there and she can enlighten you and, and, and fill you in on everything. August the 11th, Gideon Speaker will be here, so you be in prayer about this. August 18th, we'll be having the Lord's Supper. We'll celebrate the Lord's Supper that morning. Also that evening, we'll have the kinsmen here that are going to be performing their music and, and uh, give them testimonies at 6 p.m. Also, there's a Bible conference going on at Smyrna. It was a, a deal up here, but I don't see it. Fortunately, Gary wrote it down. We've got a Bible conference going on at Smyrna. It starts tonight at 6.30 with that, uh, 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 Kim. Going to be singing tonight. Who is this? Kim. That's Kim Hammond. Hammond. I couldn't read the Hammond. I thought that's who he was talking about, but I couldn't make out what. She's going to be singing Tuesday night with her sister. Oh, okay, just Tuesday night, not tonight. Okay, Tuesday night with her sister. Yeah, yeah okay. So y'all be in prayer about that, and if you get an opportunity, uh, uh, go there. And something else, uh, you know, I know it's an associational event. We're going to have church here tonight, but if anyone who would like to attend that Bible conference at, at Smyrna tonight, feel free to do that and go see what it's about. Uh, we are going to have service here, so just so you're in church. That, you know, if you'd like to attend that and see what it's about, then uh, be my guest. There's going to be some good singing, good music, and, uh, and uh, so y'all... <coughs> Y'all attend tonight there if you'd like, but we are in the church. We'd love to have you here. There. He just warned you he won't be preaching to you next Sunday about skipping church Sunday night. <laughs> uh, got a card here this morning. It says, God shows his love through the warmth and kindness of special people like you. Thank you and God bless you. We are so grateful for the love and support y'all have shown us during this time. May you all continue to be blessed. Love to you all, Angie and Vincent Terry. And we're sure glad to have Vincent here this morning. Amen. 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 And Angie both, but we're glad to have him here this morning. Any other announcements? Okay, prayer request. Great. Uh, well, have a prayer request for uh, Jim Richardson, my brother. He broke his sternum. And also uh, Albert Anderson, and uh, one of my, my cousin's husband. He's had a lot of <coughs> Meager family on there. Who? Meager, Meager. family. Uh, Cheryl Meager passed away this last week, and uh, she left behind three children and a couple of grandchildren. Okay. Johnny, I have a few people. Um, this put little Falcom on there. That's David. Stepmother's mother, she had a stroke. She's 93. Um, Crystal Tiger, she has leukemia. Um, they just took her baby, but he was fine. But that happens to be Linda Creole, Mike Creole, that was added to meal. Uh, Gary knows him. But their family has had it. I mean, it's been just a lot. So put her on there. And uh, Giselle Roberts, J A Z E L. Um, we were on a trip last Friday, and she had a massive heart attack. Mm -hmm. uh, God put us in a place where we could get her to the hospital. She's oh, she great. Great. Um, just keep the world in the prayers coming. All the shootings that we've had, we've had three over the weekend, um, mass shooting in El Paso, and there was another one in Dayton, Ohio. Um, it scared the world that we're living in now. And also Destiny, um, keep her in your prayers. She's been having some contractions been to the hospital twice, no baby yet, as we can see by the big belly. But uh <laughs> thanks mom. <laughs> but any day now. Or it's just a waiting waiting on her until she gets done cooking. Okay. Uh, Saturday we're having Jackie Cherry's baby shower up here at seven PM if you buy one. Sure and cash family. <laughs> she passed away Friday. Oh, I want to bring up the family of Stuart Watson. Stuart Watson was a foreman, a supervisor out at the paper mill that a lot of us worked with. <coughs> uh, Stuart passed away last Wednesday. He, he goes to, I believe he went to Doddridge uh, Baptist Church or somewhere over that area. Friendship. But, Friendship Baptist. Okay, I'm sorry. But anyway, I just want to lift this family up, give them strength and courage, and uh, just let them continue <coughs> on and uh, keep him in remembrance. Our son in Romania, 
he's going through something that's really bothering him right now. Yeah, I'm sorry, Miss Gina, I don't know his first name. His first name? John. John. Also put Joseph Coates on there as well. Clint, would you lift these people up very pleasure? Yes. <coughs> Father God, we come to you this morning, Lord God, we're asking you, Father, to, to, to lay your hands on these people that we put on your list, Lord God. The unspoken request, Lord God, the, the healings that we need, Father. We ask that you work in a way that only you can, Lord God. And uh, you make sure that it's that it's seen, Lord God, that it's that you're responsible. Father, we ask that you just love everyone of the type that uh, that have lost. Help them to continue to love and understand that just because they've lost them doesn't mean it's the end. In your great name we pray, Father. Amen. Get y'all turn to page 335. Page 335, we'll sing the first, second, and fourth verse of Standing on the Promises.
be here. Yes. It's just, <coughs> Lord, overwhelming to me. Lord. And I want to thank you for that. But we would all like to thank you for the opportunity to be here too, Lord, because this is where we all need to be. Yes. To fellowship with each other. Yes. And like minded people, Lord. Yes. That's where we all need to be. Where we can support each other and lean on each other. Yes. And take care of each other, Lord. Yes. This is all what we need, Lord. And we need your you in our midst, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you do for us. Amen. 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 originally signed up to sing next week but as God would have it I got a job this week and I start Wednesday um, and I've been trying to find one since the end of May so this is a this is a big blessing for me you got a job where Target I'm gonna be a tech consultant so yes it is Sin and 
you've done for me. Smyrna, right, 
These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall come, shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt by the second death. Father God, thank you, Jesus. Talk to us today. Amen. Show us what we need from you. <coughs> Lord, give us the strength and courage to listen and to come to you and bring nobody but ourselves and present ourselves to you for salvation or forgiveness and to bask in your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Message today about the church of Smyrna. <laughs> When I first started looking at this, I thought, well, this is only a few verses. I can do Smyrna and Pergamos. But as I began to look at the church of Smyrna and what the Lord says to this church and what's going on in this church, I think that the Lord wants us to take a long, hard look at what's going on. <clears throat> Y'all, you got to understand that the Lord's talking not just to the churches of the United States of America. I was talking to the churches that are all over this world, and they are. There are many, and they are numerous. And many of the churches aren't as blessed as we are here. Amen. All of the churches aren't blessed to live in a nation where we could get up this morning and get dressed if we wanted to. That's right. And come to the house of God and worship without worrying about a regime or a government or another group of people coming in and killing us. Now that's beginning to change here. Amen. And I know it is. And the Lord has given us a message today because I fully believe we may not see it in our lifetime, but the next generation may see it. If not, the generation after that are going to see a great persecution of the church in the United States of America. Amen. We're going to see it. Somebody's fixing to see it because you can see it coming on. You can see the tide of the, of, of the, of the fierceness and the wrath of Satan coming to this country. You can see it in our politics. You can see that as the, as the, as the people who used to cherish and love the, the, the church of the Lord, it's going to a place where there's no respect for it. Amen. And there's very little tolerance for the people of God who believe the Word of God, believe that He's the only way to glory, and believe that we must live by the laws and the precepts that he's put in our word. Right. That's right. We have become labeled bigot, bigots, hypocrites, people who are who, who only have it their way. We have seen this take place in our country. We're seeing the very beginning of this now as we live. And it's, it's noteworthy in verse 8 how Jesus Christ introduces himself to this church. Last week as we talked about the church of Ephesus, remember how he introduced himself to this church? He said, I'm the one that holds the seven stars. I'm the one who holds 
the seven candlesticks. I am the one that walks in the midst of the church. But this time, he introduces himself as someone else, as somebody different, as something different. And he introduces himself as the first and the last. The one who was dead, and I'm alive. Why would he do that? The Lord's wanting us to know that no matter what situation of life you're in, no matter where you are coming from, no matter what is going on with you, whether you're alcoholic, whether you're a drug addict, whether you're hooked on, uh, on pornography, whether you're guilty of adultery, fornication, homosexuality, lying, thieving, stealing, covetousness, whether you're guilty, whatever you're guilty of, He wants you to know, I'm the God of your situation. Right, I am the God of your problem. I am the one that you can come to and you can have relief. I'm the one who you can come to and you can pour out your heart to me. I'm the one that you can come to and you can repent to me. And I'm the one who can forgive you. I'm the one who can put your life back in order. I'm the one who can take you and use you for my kingdom work. But you got to know who I am. I am the beginning and I am the end. I'm the first. I'm the last. I have been here forever. I was here at creation. I've been here all through the middle of this. I was here. I walked on this earth. I died for you. I rose again. I have poured out my spirit. And let me tell you this. I'm going to be here when it's all over with. Amen. I'm going to be Amen. here when it's said and done. And if you want some of that, come to me. Amen. I'm going to give it to you. Amen. Amen. He's ready for you. He wants you to give up the life of turmoil. He wants you to give up the life of distraction. He wants you to give up the life of distress. He wants to take those things that are driving you nuts, that are running you crazy, that are causing you anguish and problems in this life, and He wants you to give that to Him where He can take it from you, and He can give you eternal life. He can give you His Spirit. He can give you the power to live and rise above any situation that you've ever been in your life. He can raise you up. You've been cast down by Satan. You've been cast down by the synagogue of the devil. You have listened to lies. You have been told by people what to do. But let me tell you what, until you listen to Jesus, you're not getting it from the horse's mouth. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Until you come to Him and realize who He is, that He's been there, He's done that, He's been tempted in every way that any man can be tempted, and He overcame it. He came out victorious. And not only that, what she sung about a while ago. He died for us. Amen. He took all of that and nailed it to his cross. And when we come to him, guess what? He got it in his hand. He is the first. He is the last. He that was dead is alive. In verse 9, he tells us again, he tells us again what it is. Look, I, I wrote some notes. I, I, I done got plumb off of this message right here from what I've written down. Let me tell you what. We don't need notes, do we? No. We need Jesus. Amen. We don't need what we wrote down. We need to know what does say the Word of God. Amen. Amen. We need to know who He is. We need to give Him glory. And we need to give Him honor. We need to do it today. Amen, Amen. brother. We need to start now. Amen. And so when, when you look at these things, and you look at verse 9, look at what he says. He introduces himself as, 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 the, as, the, as the first and the last, and the one that was dead, and the one that's alive. And now he says again, y'all, he says this to every church he writes a letter to. So he'll know, you'll know, that every church that is called by his name, that is his church, I know your works. I know who you are. I know what you're doing. And when he drove up to the church of Smyrna, you know, i got to clear up something. I said last week that every church he wrote to in the book of Revelation, he found a problem with. Brother Sam, i got to apologize for that. I misspoke. 
This is one church he didn't find a problem with. You know why? Because of what was going on in their church. What was going on in the city that they were in. This city called Smyrna. And look at what he says was going on there. <clears throat> they were under <clears throat> tribulation. Amen? The church was being persecuted by outside forces. And he identifies these outside forces. It's the same forces that's going to persecute the church here before it's over with. It's the same force that's going to, per that's going to bring tribulation to the churches of Jesus Christ in the United States of America someday. He calls it the synagogue of Satan. Those, the synagogue of Satan is the force, the darkness that comes in and looks at the light and says it's all a big lie. It's all a big hoax. Hoax. These people are a danger to what we want to do in this world. You see it now in our politics. You see people who are pointing at us as the danger of America today. Yeah, that's right. Come on now. Amen? That's right. You see the Muslim congresswomen that we have standing up and talking about Israel like they were the, the Nazi Germans. Talking about the church like they're people that's run things way too long. And we want to bring about change. And how they want to do it? They want to give stuff to everybody. They want to make everything free, free, free. You know what's free? <laughs> Salvation in Jesus Christ right. don't cost you a penny. If you want to listen to the synagogue of Satan, you listen to that. You fall for that. But let me tell you what, there's going to be a price paid for that. Amen. Amen. There's going to be a price paid for that. And so I begin to look because the Bible don't say here, what is this tribulation that they're facing? Let me read to you what I found out. When I got to looking at Smyrna, and what my encyclopedia said about Smyrna, my biblical encyclopedia, let me clarify that. Let me read you what it says. What is now modern day Turkey is the country where Smyrna was located. Mm -hmm. There is a city right now that is a modern day version of Smyrna that exists now. The name of this city is Izmir, I-Z-M-I-R. It is, it, it is built on top of the ancient city of Smyrna. And Smyrna was given the honor, if you want to call it that, of building a temple to Tiberius, the, king, the emperor of Rome. Because of Smyrna's faithfulness to Rome, the city became a center for, listen to this, the cult worship of an emperor. The cult worship of an emperor or a man. The city became the center for the cult worship of the emperors. And, the, and later on, Nero and uh, Domini, uh, Dom, I can't even say his name, Dom, <laughs> Domitian brought this severe persecution to this very church mm -hmm. because they were expected to worship emperors and not the one true God. Right. And anybody who worshiped the one true God would not worship that emperor. You say, well, boy, that's neither here nor there. You don't think that's not going on in our world today? Yes, Let me give you the name of a country that you're very, 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 very familiar with that's experiencing this as we speak. The name of the country is North Korea. Listen to me. Listen to what the Word of God has to tell us today. The emperor there is Kim John Un that you hear so much in the news about. They have set up him as a god. They worshiped his father and now they worship him. They bow down to portraits of him. They have altars built for him. In that country today, there is 3,000 Christians that live in that nation. Amen. Just 3,000. 
They are not expected to worship Jesus only. They're also expected to worship Him. We don't hear much about that kind of stuff, do we? You know why? Because our media outlet sources don't want to tell you anything about what's going on with God's people. They want to tell you how everything's good over there. It's not. You know why? Because the synagogue of Satan are destroying Christians in a nation just like this. If you come tonight, I'm going to share with you a bunch of nations. And the, the, the thing that is, a, it, that is against our Christianity, this, this first one here is communist oppression and worship of a dictator or, a, or an emperor. And so I just wanted to throw that in. That's, that's, that's neither here nor there. I just want you to know that today, because of Jesus Christ and His words, not just speaking to the churches in the United States of America, He's speaking to the churches in Korea. He's speaking to the churches in Pakistan. He's speaking to the church in Turkey. He's speaking to the churches everywhere in His Word. And y'all, just because we're not suffering from that here today, right now, don't mean it's not going to happen. Let me tell you what. I'm going to drop this in. This ain't nowhere in my notes. I just want you to know. There are churches today who worship men in this country. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. There are people that call themselves preachers and prophets of God in this nation who has a following that follow them. They don't follow Christ. Amen? They follow a person. You have churches that are supposed to be churches that belong to Jesus Christ. You let the pastor get run off and see what happens to that church. You'll find out who's following Jesus and who's following that preacher. Amen? Amen. You'll find out real quick what they're made of. Amen. Amen. You know what? God calls us to a church. He calls us to a body of believers. When God calls you to a church, He expects you to stay there until He removes you from that church. Amen. Exactly. Amen. This is His church. The Bible says He adds to it the way He wants to add to it. He brings in who He wants to bring in. He calls who He wants to call. He empowers who He wants to empower. He gives us the gifts He wants to give us, not some yo-yo tells us we're supposed to have. Amen. He gives them to us as we need them because He wants to further and benefit the people in the, the church He's called you to because you can see from this there's all different problems in different churches. Amen. Amen. And when we go to focusing on those gifts and saying, well, if you ain't got this, you ain't got it, that's a lie from hell. Amen. Amen? Amen. A lie from hell. Because <coughs> God's in control. He knows what you need. He knows who you need. And He adds to His church. And I love it. I love it because I know how He does it. He begins to do this on your heart. Amen? Amen. He goes... And he knocks on the door of your heart. Do you know whose job it is to let him in? He ain't going to kick the door down. He ain't going to knock the door down. It's your job to open the door and say, Lord Jesus, come in and be the king of my home. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. That's the way this works. Amen. He don't come in and play second fiddle. He comes in to take over the house. That's right. Amen. <clears throat> he comes in to take over the house. Why did he come completely off of this? It's all right. Right here. Preach it. And so, when you look at the Smyrna, and you look at this, and you say, well, you know what? I don't know about all this tribulation stuff. Let me tell you, let me read you this scripture right here. John 16 and 33. Christ says this. These things I have spoken unto you. It's John 16 and 33. These things I have spoken to you that in me you might have peace. In the world, he goes on to say, you shall have tribulation. Now that's the Lord Jesus Christ speaking to us. But be of good cheer. Why? Oh, glory. Because he says, I have overcome the world. The tribulation of the world. And, and we're going to get into that here in just a minute as to what he said to this church. We want the Lord to take us out of tribulation. <coughs> His word tells us we're in tribulation. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. 
And the tribulation that he's talking about has killed many Christians. It's got a lot of people's heads cut off. My wife asked me this morning about the Apostle Paul. She said, you know, the Bible don't record his death. I said, no, because after he died, he quit writing letters. Amen? Amen. But let me tell you what happened to him. They cut his head off. Right. Amen? He was persecuted. He was under great distress and tribulation. He suffered. You know what he said? Something we're afraid to say. You know what Paul said? I, I counted a blessing to suffer for my Jesus. Amen. Oh Amen. God, if the church of Jesus Christ today could get that attitude. Yeah, I count it a blessing to suffer. What do we want to do when we suffer? We want to cry and whine and let people know how bad we feel about it. These people at Smyrna was under great tribulation because they didn't worship an emperor. They worship Jesus Christ. Amen. And they weren't willing to give. Amen. Amen. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder to give you something to think about. If we were under that kind of tribulation here in the United States today, how many of you would have been afraid to come to church today? Mm -hmm. We can't hardly get people to come to church when everything's going hunky-dory in their life. What would happen if we had the synagogue of Satan bombarding this church? How many of you would have got up this morning and said, well, I'd like to go to church, but I ain't going there. Ain't too much going on. Ain't too much uh, bad stuff going on there. Huh? Come on now. God help us. We need to learn that he's overcome the world. We've got to be afraid of that junk. And let us go on. Let's read on. Other words, the things that, that, that we need to know here that he says to this church. He said, I know your tribulation. We're going to get back to the poverty here in just a minute. But he says in verse 10, fear none of those things. Did he didn't say that? Mm -hmm. Don't you be afraid of those things. That's what he said. He said, don't you be afraid of this tribulation. <laughs> now these people's lives were on the line. What Jesus said, don't be afraid. You know why? <laughs> you know why he can say that? Because he knows something we, we don't think about a whole lot, but we don't like to think about it. He knows that there's no dead people to him. Mm -hmm. And he knows that there's something way better than this place after this place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen to him. And he knows that these people at this church have got the goods. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because they're not backing down from the tribulation. Now notice here, he don't come in here and say, I'm going to take you out of this tribulation. I'm going to come in, I'm going to zap them people. That's what we expect God to do, don't we? Sometimes. I'm going to come in and fire from heaven is going to come down and obliterate those people that are bugging you. That ain't what he told them. You know why he told them that? Because that ain't the way he works. But here is the way he works. He makes us all a promise. Every person that knows Jesus Christ as their Savior, He makes a promise too. I will be with you. If you're in prison, I'm with you. If you're suffering tribulation, I'm with you. If you're on your deathbed, I'm there. If you're going through sickness that's just destroying your life, I, I, I'm with you. I'm there. I'm your Lord. You're my child. I'm there. Could he take it all away? Absolutely. But he never has. Because that ain't the way he works. Right. Amen. So he tells these people right here. He said, don't be afraid of what you're suffering right now. And then he says, behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried and you shall have tribulation ten days. Be, look at what he says. Be faithful unto death. Be faithful until they take your life away. Be, don't be afraid. Be faithful 
It's high time we let faith conquer fear. Amen. It's high time that we quit being afraid of the world and have faith in the one who created the world. Amen. That we quit fearing a government and have faith in the one who put the government in our place. Amen. And trust him. And believe in him. Huh. And he says this, if you're going to be faithful to the end, I'm going to give you something. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. What's he going to give you? He's going to give you a crown of life. Amen. Y'all, I'm going to tell you, and I know I've got to move on. This nation, the United States of America, the land of the free, the home of the brave, you've heard it all your life. You're seeing right now people desecrate our flag. People spit on it, wipe themselves with it, set it on fire, stomp it. We're seeing a great movement where people will not honor our national anthem because they're not patriotic anymore, because they look at our nation, the greatest nation in my opinion that God ever raised up from the dirt. Amen. Amen. The greatest privileged nation, why? Because our forefathers, I don't care what the stinking news tells <coughs> came here in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. They came here seeking a place where they could come and worship their Creator. Amen. And no tyranny was going to be allowed to take that away from them. And yet we see today how tyranny has risen to the highest levels of our government and they wish to take that away from us. You know what he says? Don't be afraid of them. <laughs> be faithful. Amen. How do you be faithful? You keep proclaiming him. You keep lifting up his holy name. You keep telling people, he saved my soul and I'm going to glory with him one of these days. Amen. Hallelujah. You keep telling people, he's the only way. Uh -huh. While they spit on you, push you around. He sees every bit of it. He's with you. He's overcome the world. Don't be afraid because I got a crown for you. You hang in there. Do you believe him? Do you believe Jesus today? I do. I believe he's got a crown. Who's he got the crown for? Those that are faithful. Those people of faith. You cannot please God without this faith. Amen. There's another scripture that I want to read you, to you about uh, the tribulation and persecution. Listen to this. And people have misused the scripture. It's been found in Romans chapter 8, verses 35 through 39. Listen to this. And it's a very familiar scripture to you. And you'll see why in a minute. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Familiar to you? <laughs> shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? And is it as it is written? Now listen to this. For thy sake, talking about the sake of Jesus, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep to the slaughter. They will preach it, don't preach that very much. All they want people to join the church. They don't want to make them feel like they're going to get slaughtered when they get here. But this is something we got to uh, uh, identify with. This is something we got to understand. Your faith in Jesus Christ should never come to an end at the point of a gun. Huh? Nope. You've seen it in, in our world in the last few years where they held a sword at people's head and said, renounce him. And they didn't say a word. They didn't do anything. You know what they did to them? Yeah. They cut their heads off. Mm -hmm. But you know what? <laughs> they woke up with a crown on their head. Right. Is our faith that strong? Would we do that? Or we come so complacent that if it ain't easy, we ain't going to do it. Amen. Let me finish reading this. Nay, 
And all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. Why? Because He's overcome the world. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know why he could say that? Because he's filled with Christ Jesus his Lord. Amen. And he knows that if they kill him, I'm going to glory. <coughs> no matter what they do to him, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to earn that crown by my faith. He goes on and he says, let's back up in verse 9 again. He said, I know your tribulation. This, this, this church was tribulated. There's a lot of tribulation there. But he says, you're also impoverished. You're poor. You see that? They had trouble feeding themselves. They had trouble having money to do anything. Because they didn't have any money. They were in poverty. That means they were barely meeting the basic necessities of food, of shelter, and of clothing. He saw this church. Yet, guess what? They were under extreme tribulation. They were the poorest of the poor. And the government was wanting them to worship who they wanted them to worship. But they wouldn't be having none of that. And that's why Jesus said, look at what he said in parentheses in verse 9. But you are what? rich. Amen. You know what? The Lord don't look at rich like we do. We think if we don't have a bank full of money, we're not rich. Come on, bro. These people didn't have nothing. We think if we don't have a fire at home, we're not rich. We don't think if we don't have boats and motorcycles and four-wheelers and side-by-sides and all of these toys, we don't, we're not rich. We think if we don't have a nice, beautiful vehicle, we're not rich. We don't think if we didn't carry our kids and they go to school and they don't have the most fashionable of the clothing, we're not rich. Uh, but what did Jesus say to them? You are rich. Why? Because they had Him. And because they had Him, they had the pearl of great price living in their hearts. You're rich. You want to be rich? Let Jesus, when He goes, open the door and let Him in and you're going to become fabulously wealthy. Amen? By the power of God. Now, when we get to glory, we're going to walk on that stuff that we crave here. We're going to lean up on that stuff that we wear around our neck that we pay a bunch bucks for. We're going to lean up on We're going to walk through pearl gates. You know why? Because that ain't what's rich. That ain't what makes heaven wealthy. That's not what makes the new Jerusalem the crown of His glory. You know what makes the new Jerusalem the crown of His glory? Because He's there. Amen. Because His throne is there. Amen. And if you ain't got Jesus, you'll never be rich. Amen, Amen. brother. Amen. He goes on. And I'm fixing to close. I'm close now. He tells us one more thing. He that hath an ear, let him hear. There's something else I noticed about all of these churches. He introduced himself he immediately told them, I know your words. All seven of them. And at the end, when he got through giving them the message that he wanted them to have, he said, if you have an ear, hear me. Let me tell you what, it don't do no good if I get up here and preach a lot of horse. It don't do any good if the Lord God walks through the midst of you. If you won't listen to Him, you won't get anything. There's people in churches that sit here that worry about what they're going to do after church. They worry about lunch. They worry, and I'm going to tell you what, I ain't got my cell phone with me right now, but they'll sit in church and play on them stinking things. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
They worry about everything. And they're not hearing what the Lord has to say to His church and His people. And He gave the warning after every one of the letters to these churches. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Amen. You better listen. You better open up your ears and hear now what He's got to say. And His message and His invitation is always the same. Hear my word. Obey my word. And come to me. Amen? Amen? His message is the same. He that overcometh shall not be hurt in the second death. You know what the second death is? You're going to all experience that one day. All of us are. The second death is a judgment. For the Lord says, Well done, thou faithful servant. Come and enter into my rest. Those people, there's no second death to. But the other group is the ones he'll look at and say, Depart from me. I don't know you. They're going to argue with you. And then his angels are going to drag them away from his throne. And cast them into a thing that calls outer darkness, where they're going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Bible says, where it's hurt, hot, there is no water, and the worm never dies. It's going to be a place of gnashing of teeth, screaming, but that's not even the worst part of that place, because the second death is that there is no God. Mm -hmm. to comfort you there. Amen. Those who went on to glory are going to be with God forever. <laughs> if you've got an ear this morning and you knew, <laughs> and He's telling you today you're not ready, if you've got an ear, hear what He's saying to you. Come to me. Amen. Just come. That's all you gotta do. Take a step. Come to me. And let me in. And I'll give you the power to overcome because I've already done that. Would you stand with me? Please close your eyes. Bow your head. These offers are open for prayer. Please, if the Lord has spoken to you in any way today, would you please hear what He said to you and respond to that very thing? <coughs>
And we watched as they flew airplanes into our World Trade Centers. We watched as the fire went through those buildings. We watched as those buildings crumbled to the ground. And those terrorists thought, because they don't understand Jesus, if we can hit them in their pocketbook, if we can hit them where their money is, we'll strike fear in their hearts. That's happened here already. The next morning, our president got on national television and he said, pray. Everybody pray. Pray for your neighbor. Pray for each other. Pray for these people that have died. Pray for our firefighters. Pray for our police officers. Pray for our military. Because we don't know what's fixing that. Pray! And that next Sunday, it was reported all over the news that the church houses were full of people. And people came and wept and cried to a holy God. Where did that go? Why did that stop? Why did we stop doing that? I can tell you why. Because we rely on chariots and horses. And when our military went, our great military went and decimated those countries that were responsible. We felt like we had been vindicated. The Lord didn't let that happen for us to rely on our military. The Lord let that happen so we would turn to Him and let us know that our wealth our richness is not in Wall Street. It's in Him. This invitation is almost over. I can't help but believe that God's not talking to someone else here today. I don't know why you won't hear. Why you won't listen. Why you won't obey. I don't know why. Only you know that. That's my prayer is for it's over with. You will heed and you will listen so that you'll have no reason to ever fear the second death. And you can rejoice because you got a crown waiting on you in glory. But I don't know what the Lord wants for me right now. I said, I do. He's, wanting, he's knocking. That's what it was. kept knocking on that pulpit while I go. He's been knocking on this man's heart. Amen. For weeks. I've been seeing him come to the altar. He never would say nothing to me. And I kept thinking, okay, I'm not going to approach him when he's ready. But he's ready. <laughs> and today, he came to this altar. And he nailed it down. 
Praise God. You know you're saved? Hallelujah. There you go. Amen, brother. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Ain't no better feeling in the whole wide world than to know you're saved. Amen. And I told him, I said, if you give that life to the Lord like he's going to do, he's going to write that name down today. If he ain't already got it, he's going to write it. Mm -hmm. And it's going to stay right there. And he's going to give you a crown one of these days. And I believe that on you. So Josh came this morning to make sure he knew he was saved. And he says he is. And he also wants something else from us. And I'm going to tell you what he said because you need to know this. He said from the first day I walked <laughs> into this church, he said I was made to feel welcome. Amen. <laughs> I was made to feel like they were glad they, that I was here. Right. They made me feel like I was a part of this place, that I wanted to be here, and he said, I want some more of that. Amen, Amen. brother. Amen. And I told him, I said, okay, Lord, you're going to honor that request, and now you're going to have to be the one doing the welcoming. <laughs> Amen. So he wants to become a part of this church. Okay. Do we have a motion? Do we see a He got a second. Oh boy, this is first, second, third, fourth, fifth. <laughs> All in favor say hallelujah. Hallelujah. All opposed say oh my. Now you didn't hear no oh my. That's a good thing. Where's Lucas? He ain't in here. He's on there. what Lucas the one time he did that. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you did it. Yes, shameful did. hussy, you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing now. You know what? Isn't it wonderful that we can stand up here and laugh with the great joy Amen. that our Lord Jesus Amen. still saves. That's right. Amen. And people, if you'll just open up that door like Josh did. Amen. And let him come in. He'll give you that blessed assurance. He'll show you that marvelous, infinite grace. And he'll be ready for you. Amen. He'll love you with a love you've never known. And he'll talk about some more things, but I'm not going to go into that. So, Josh, you see this group right here? Like it or not, you just became a part of this. <laughs> Amen. And you, know, you look at some of them, it makes you want to giggle. So, we won't look, I'm not going to point anybody out, except maybe Johnny Crow. He always makes people giggle. <laughs> but anyway, this church is a loving church. And we're glad to have you as a part of it. Pastor Gary. This church, sir, ma'am. Texas. Catch. Catch. I didn't even see it. <laughs> what did I catch? It's a Bible marker. Oh, I thought you pulled strings out of your dress there. <laughs> I'm playing with you. It's the same color. Give it to our new brother. There's your Bible marker. Anyway, th this church is here to support you, to pray for you. If you have a need, call on anybody. They'll help you. They'll pray for you. They'll Amen. Help you. They'll help you any way they can. And we require that from you. We want you to be a part of that very thing out there. Amen. So with all that said, we're fixing the prayer, dismissal prayer, and I want y'all to come by and give Josh the right hand of fellowship. Also, he told me something I didn't know a while ago. He told me who his daddy was, and I've been knowing his daddy ever since I was a wee little boy. And so I kind of went to school with him one time. But anyway, kind of, because I just kind of went to school, by the way. <laughs> but anyhow, I know his dad, and I knew his grandpa, I knew his family. So it's a great privilege to, to be able to preach and be your pastor now. Amen. It's an even a greater privilege to be with you when you gave your heart to Jesus. Amen. So God bless you all. Let's have a word of prayer. Be dismissed. And y'all come by and give him the right hand of fellowship. What a great blessing this is. Brother Sam, would you dismiss us, please? Thank you for this church that we have done here preaching and your word. Father, if your word goes forth to church and service and say that you would help us to have the ears to hear what your word has to say and be able to live it for any practice you can do. We thank you for this young man that's come. We bless you and bless him. We thank you for your goodness and 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 your goodness.